talk about at parties. You want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. Keep this frequency clear. And now it's conspiracy, see? They've made that something that, that, is, that is, should, should not be even entertained for a minute, that powerful people might get together and have a plan. Doesn't happen. You're a kook. You're a conspiracy bum. You're watching The Truth is Viral, the only news program on the internet trusted to deliver the truth since 2008. And now, here's your host, Mr. Bobby Powell. Welcome back to The Truth is Viral. I'm your host, Bob Powell, and uh, this is going to be an interesting episode because this is a continuation of a story that started last year on June 6th of 2012 when there was a massive explosion that rocked all of northeastern Michigan. It was felt from Presqu'ile down to Austinic and out to Lachine. That is uh, an area of hundreds of square miles. Okay, so to quickly recap what happened back on June 6th of 2012, there was a massive explosion that rocked northeastern Michigan. And it was felt all the way from Presqu'ile down to Osnique and out to Lachine. That's an area that covers hundreds of square miles. People were posting on Facebook about it all morning. Well, I was laying on the couch with my one-year-old, and she, uh, I mean, we felt the shake, we felt the explosion. She woke right up. And uh, I was like, what was that? So we went upstairs and checked on mom, and mom was okay. And uh, then immediately after that, I'm like, I got to figure out what that was. So I posted on Facebook, um, what, you know, what was that noise? Did anybody else hear it? And immediately I got responses. Um, people were telling me they thought it was, uh, there were three different scenarios I got out of it at least. Uh, one said Lafarge blasting, which I don't think it was because I've lived in the area for long enough. I've actually heard Lafarge blast, not that loud and not that big of an explosion. Um, number two, they said it could have been a sonic boom from a jet. Um, the thing I didn't hear after the boom was uh, usually it crackles after a jet goes by at, at Mach 1, and uh, it didn't crackle. It was just a, a straight-up explosion. And uh, what was the third one? Uh, sinkholes. <laughs> sinkholes. Sinkholes. Yep, and uh, I just don't think it could be a sinkhole. It made an explosion, so sinkholes, you'd feel the rumble, but you wouldn't hear a boom, and that's right. what we heard was a boom. Now, this morning, I uh, went to the Alpena County Sheriff's Department, and I spoke with the undersheriff, and he said that his entire building shook, but uh, after they sent out deputies to investigate the source of the sound, they couldn't find anything, and I heard the same story from uh, the Alpena City Police Department, 9-11 Dispatch Center, and uh, the Alpena Regional Combat Training Center told me that they had no planes in the air, much less any planes that were going supersonic. Hi Bob, this is Patricia calling from the Alpena CRTC, and we spoke yesterday. I was following up, uh, we had a question about whatever that big boom was, and I've uh, spoken to several people here on the base, and we haven't been able to determine what it was either, so it didn't happen here. Um, but if I do come across anything, I will let you know, and have a good day. Bye. And Lafarge, which is the largest cement plant in the world, it told me that they weren't doing any blasting. So the source of this explosion is a complete mystery. Now, it was a, a large explosion. I mean, I've, I've felt high, high explosive detonations. You know, it felt just like a 155 shell landing right down the block from us. And this was heard from Presqu'ile down to uh, Osnique and, and out to Hillman, that's 50 miles one way. Even all the way to Lincoln, Even somebody to said Lincoln. they heard it. So that's another 20 miles. I mean, this was a huge explosion. Now, if it happened all simultaneously, that's something that I don't know. Everybody said they heard it, but they don't remember about what time it was. So was it multiple blasts or was it one big blast that was heard forever? Where the source was, who knows? Could, it could have been out in the middle of the uh, Lake Huron. You never know. They could have had some kind of blasting going on out there, and it could have shook everything. You know, and, and even if it's far enough out there, we can still hear that. Yeah. So. And I went to NOAA also this morning, and uh, because somebody had forwarded me some information that it could have had a geological uh, source, uh, sinkholes that are prevalent in Thunder Bay. One reason that uh, they call it Thunder Bay is an old Indian legends. The you know atmospheric things like like the Seneca guns, but the spokesman from NOAA told me that there's no way that those sinkholes could have caused this noise. 
And there's, there's a, there is a fault line that runs right underneath Alpena, but uh, the USGS said that uh, no earthquakes either. So whatever this is, it is a complete and total mystery. And uh, I went to NOAA and I went and looked at the US Geological Survey website and there were no natural uh, phenomena that might have been the cause of that explosion. I went to Lafarge. They denied doing any blasting. It's the large cement plant with a quarry here. And uh, I went to the Alpena County Sheriff's Department where I spoke with Under Sheriff Terry King and he said that uh, he was in the building when it shook. And, you know, so there's no doubt that there was a massive explosion. Nobody seems to know what happened and, and or what caused it. And as a last resort, I went out uh, or I called the Alpena Regional Combat Training Center and asked them if they had had any planes going supersonic. And they called me back the next morning and the spokesman said that they didn't have uh, any planes in the air, much less any that were uh, going supersonic. They didn't know what caused the explosion either. Anyway, this, uh, this drone facility here at the Alpena Regional Combat Training Center is going to be huge. Uh, it's being built in conjunction with the Department of Defense uh, and, and General Dynamics and it's going to employ hundreds of people and bring millions of dollars to Alpena County which is why maybe I ran into a bit of resistance and, and still am running into some resistance. Well here we are on June 7th now and I'm going out to the Alpena Regional Combat Training Center to get that statement on video. and. The moment I stepped on the base, I was arrested. And I hadn't even had a chance to present my ID. You know, I'd, just, I'd called and told them I was coming, that I wanted to speak with the uh, press officer. But uh, apparently fusion centers are a wonderful tool for the government because they knew that my license was suspended long before I did. Uh, so, you know, that that's that. We got that all that mess all straightened out thanks to you guys. Uh, so there's no explanation for the explosion but interestingly 90 minutes later uh, there was a huge radiation spike uh, felt down below and it was recorded on three different networks and as far away as a Chicago police lab where a police officer there recorded a radiation spike so you know that's you know something that's very interesting to, to take note of. Uh, a few days later, somebody came forward to me and uh, told me the story of a UFO and U.S. fighter jets out over Lake Huron that way. And uh, this was supposed to have happened at around 9.30 on the 6th. And, you know, this person has been very reluctant to come forward and, and give the full story, especially on, on video, and, and I can't really say as I blame them. But, uh, you know, I had this story, you know, from this person, and I wanted to see if there was anything to it, maybe, that I could back up with hard science. So I went to flightradar24.com, and I looked at the radar tracks for that night, and this is what I found. Well, I found two uh, planes that were approaching Alpena, and one, and they both just disappear from radar after being held motionless in midair for several minutes. Now, these are those two videos. You can click on either one as you're watching it right now, and it will take you to the entire uh, video as I, you know, record the screenshot off of flightradar24.com. As these planes freeze in midair and then they just disappear. Tell me that that's not spooky. Okay, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, and, and one of those planes, the, the one on the left there, was a, a, a cargo flight from Qatar. And we all know what's in Qatar, don't we? That's uh, where CENTCOM has its headquarters. So, you know, who knows what might have come over the Arctic Circle based in Qatar. That's where that plane was coming from. Okay, so it just keeps on getting weirder and weirder. Because then, you know, I recall that back on January 10th, I uh, 
shot this video outside my house in the direction of the Alpena Regional Combat Training Center. I had heard a, a loud roaring noise, thought maybe I had been hearing the, I was hearing the trumpets that everybody had been claiming to hear, and uh, went outside with my video camera, and this is what I caught. Now, who knows? It might have been an afterburner, it might have been flares, uh, but I'm, I'm beginning to question that because you know, a lot of people have said that they don't look like flares, and they really don't. Because from my experience in the military, flares last a lot longer than that. Even uh, anti-missile flares last a lot longer than that, and they come out a lot quicker too. So uh, that sighting is still unexplained. and. On August 25th, this video was uploaded by In Destination Unknown. It's supposed to be a TR-3B that was sighted over the Alpena Regional Combat Training Center. There's a link to the full video on In Destination Unknown's YouTube page. I've tried to contact them, but so far I've not gotten any response. And since I didn't shoot the video myself, I have no way of verifying its authenticity. Hopefully I'll be able to track that person down and uh, bring you their story on a future episode of the show. Not a thing was said in the local media about this explosion. The newspaper was silent. The television was silent. The radio stations were silent. Doesn't make any difference that uh, under Sheriff Terry King told me himself that he was in the Sheriff's Department when he felt the building shake. According to uh, NOAA, the United States Geological Survey, and the United States Air Force, this event never happened. Well, these explosions are taking place all over the country. Uh, down in South Carolina, a friend of mine that writes for the Activist Post by the name of Brandon Tur Turbeville, uh, wrote about some explosions that he was experiencing down there. And in just a few minutes, we're going to talk with Brandon and he's gonna tell us the, how huge these explosions are and, and the reaction of uh, local authorities down in South Carolina. I didn't want to uh, update this story though until I had something more to offer you. And in this episode, that something more is sitting right across from me and uh, this man felt the first explosion back in June of last year but he also felt a second explosion earlier this year and I didn't feel this one so I didn't know about it I didn't know about it until he told me about it and the thing about this explosion that makes it unique is that there was actually property damage associated with it. And I'll be showing you the pictures of that property damage as, as we record this interview. Uh, but first, you tell us how you first felt that first explosion. What did it feel like back in, in June of last year? Well, I was, I was down in the basement doing some laundry and all, all I remember is it was just rattled the whole house. I, I thought for a minute that the house was caving in. I was about ready to say my last prayer. Yeah, until I 
realized that nothing was falling in. And basically, how, what happened, it just shook the whole house. Yeah, so it was pretty powerful then, huh? Yes, it was. And there was a second explosion back this past Jan. Was it in January? Like or three or four weeks ago, I believe. About three or four weeks ago. Oh, okay. I misunderstood you. Okay, so this explosion actually caused property damage. Yes, it did. Uh, tell us about that one. Well, we didn't know that it did any damage to our foundation until after the, the winter thaw started coming in and it started getting pretty damp. And then I realized that the, our basement was getting some good amount of water in it. And I uh, had to tear up the floor and get it all cleaned up. And then I re realized that there was a big old crack in the, in the foundation uh, just under one of our windows, which never leaked before. Yeah. Never, never leaked the basement, never leaked until after that explosion. Okay, so that can you describe that second explosion? How did that one feel to you? Was it similar to the first? It was similar to the first, yeah. I was, I was standing by the front door, and when it happened, it happened, it, it, it rattled the window and the screen door so bad that I jumped back so I thought that the windows were going to break and it just rattled everything once again. Yeah. You know, we're not too far at all right now at this very moment from the Alpena Combat Readiness Training Center. And uh, I'm not sure what it is that they're doing out there, but whatever it is, it's huge. And people are feeling it, but local media is completely silent. And it, it's funny actually because local uh, elected officials are coming to me asking me for answers <laughs> well I, I really don't have any I don't know what they're doing at the combat readiness training center but I do know that whatever it is they are doing whatever they can to keep a lid on it uh, just this last week they wrapped up uh, an exercise called Northern Strike. It was the largest air combat exercise in the country. It even had some ground elements in it. And uh, some of these ground elements were foreign troops. And I was in Walmart just last week when four of these troops came in to the store. And uh, You know, if you've spent any time in the military at all, you know what a badass looks like. The kind of person that can look at you and kill you 10 different ways. Well, that's what these guys are. Okay, every uh, branch of service has their own special forces. The Marine Corps got Force Recon. Uh, the Army's got uh, Delta Force. The Navy's got SEALs. Well, other countries have services that have their special forces too and they all share the same traits these guys just have that look you can tell well besides having the look which is what got me interested in them in the first place uh as i started following them through the walmart <laughs> wearing this t-shirt carrying my sidearm which is uh you know rather large if uh, i ever run out of bullets i can beat somebody to death with it but uh Anyway, they made me rather quickly. So one of them circled around and started following me. Well, I, I was brave there for a second, <laughs> but uh, I would not want to take on one of these guys, much less four of them. And uh, discretion being the better part of valor, I uh, beat a hasty retreat, went out to my truck to grab my camera so that at least I could have some evidence to show you good folks but when I got back into the store they were gone so uh, you know there's that and then there's the story that I just published uh, the story of a, a gentleman here in Alpena a combat wounded army ranger who has been vocal in the Patriot community he's also been the target of uh, intimidation uh, Black Hawk helicopter came a lot closer than the one that uh, was circling my house. His black helicopter came about 20 feet above his head and the pilot stared at him for several seconds and then wheeled around and took off. So I don't know what's going on up here, but something is going on. 
and these massive explosions are part of it. So it's not just here in Alpena, it's all over the country. Let's go now to South Carolina and talk with activist post contributor, Brandon Turbeville. Welcome back to The Truth is Viral Live. I'm your host, Bob Powell, and today we're gonna to talk about those mysterious booms once again. Uh, the ones that got me arrested last June 6th when an explosion rocked hundreds of square miles here in northeastern Michigan. From Presque Isle down to Osneek and out to Lachine, everything shook. Terry King of the Alpena County Sheriff's Department told me that he was standing in the Sheriff's Department building when it shook. The uh, Alpena Re Re Combat Readiness Training Center denies having any knowledge of what could have caused this explosion. The National Weather Service and NOAA say that there are no natural explanations for it. The United States Geological Survey says that there is no natural explanation for it, so it is a complete mystery. Shortly thereafter, <laughs> my release from prison, I got a phone call from a, a reporter from the Activist Post by the name of Brandon Turbeville because he experienced the exact same thing down in South Carolina. And uh, when he read my account of it, you know, he knew that he was on to something. And Brandon's here as my guest today on The Truth is Viral, and I would like to welcome him to the show. Welcome to the show there, Brandon. How you doing, bro? Oh, I'm okay. Thanks for having me on, Bob. Hey, uh, I'm looking here at this uh, latest article that you wrote on March 21st. It says, does an uptick in mysterious booms foretell a megaquake? Can you talk about that for just a minute? Yeah, I... I should mention that, that the idea of connecting the, the booms to, to earthquakes, that's not something new. There, the, the types of booms that we're talking about, which I'm sure your, your listeners will be familiar with, have been heard before. In fact, they even have a name going back to James Fenimore Cooper in the 1800s. He called them the, the Lake Guns or the Seneca Guns. And these were... Um, sounds that he heard while on, on Lake Seneca and New York, uh, which are almost identical in description to what we've heard. Um, but the, the, the thing about it, uh, they're not always connected to earthquakes, um, not necessarily, but they have been connected to at least two to three earthquakes. And unfortunately, these earthquakes, one of them was the 1886 Charleston earthquake, which I'm sure you'd be familiar with, down here, and uh, then the 1811-1812 New Madrid earthquakes, which were you know even scarier, caused the Mississippi to run backwards and so forth. And these booms, and uh, and that's for lack of a better term, you know, because there there is a vibration to them as well. But they occurred before, during, and after, um, shortly before, during, and after all three of those major earthquakes. So, um, these are in some of the accounts. I went and I pulled up some of the accounts. There's Clarence E. Dutton's account in 1889. It was called the Charleston Earthquake of August 31st, 1886. And you can pull that up. There's actually a website um, dedicated to the New Madrid earthquakes and the Charleston earthquakes that has a lot of these stories attached. But this guy, um, this Clarence Dutton, goes through a lot of the reports that he came across that also center around uh, these, these strange explosions, these explosions that you, know, you don't see them, obviously, but you hear them and you feel them, and they were connected with the, with the earthquake. But, you know, at, at this point, I would say whether or not the booms are directly co uh, connected to a mega quake or any earthquake itself, uh, you know, it's, it's somewhat speculation, but at the same time, it's it's better than anything we've been given. Uh, you know, the the explanation that we got here the first time we experienced it in well, I, I should say the first time in 2012 that we experienced this stuff did happen in 2011, and it's happened before. But uh, the, the the main experience that we had in the uh, PD region of South Carolina in 2012, um, we were told that it was jets breaking the sound barrier. Um, but it's clearly not jets breaking the sound barrier for, for two reasons. I mean, I, we've, I've heard jets break the sound barrier before, and, uh, you know, it, yes, there is a boom to it, but, but not like this. this. This shook the floor not like strong thunder, but it was almost 
as if there was an explosion underground that you could hear outside. And you described it as artillery, like the sound of artillery, and that's exactly what it sounds like, somebody firing artillery off in the distance. But um, the actual impact, the one that I felt, I felt two of them, and the one that I felt most, uh, you know, most powerfully was I described it as if you, you were sitting in a living room and, and somebody crawled on the back of a couch, uh, a full-grown adult crawled on the back of a couch and just jumped off the couch and landed on the floor. Um, you know, that's, that is the vibration that I felt um, when, this, when this happened the second time. Now, the first one was a lot smaller. It sounded like artillery off in the distance, and I felt something underneath the floor. But the second time, it was much, much more powerful. So if it's jets breaking the sound barrier, uh, th- these jets should be low enough for us to see, right? Because they have to flow relatively low. I mean, they have to be visible uh, if they're breaking the sound barrier, I would imagine. And if they're breaking the sound barrier, why are they doing that so much recently? Yeah. So I, what time of the day did these uh, booms occur in South Carolina? Um, I'd say 7.30, 7.45. Um, that's when all the calls came into the local news agencies when, when the bigger one happened last year. Generally, it seems that they are happening in the evening. The, one, the first one that I felt was in the evening around about the same time, and the second major one was around 7.30, uh, anywhere from 6.45, 7.45. There were some that happened over the Christmas holidays, and there were some, of course, that actually happened in, in March. Uh, some people in, in the PD area were reporting these. They seem to be a little bit smaller, but they do, um, you know, they do seem to be continuing. So how does your experience with law enforcement compare with mine? Uh, the, are they accepting the Air Force's explanation that it was a uh, sonic boom? And, and if they are... You know, the Air Air Force is supposed to get in trouble for stuff like that. Has anything ever come of that? You know, was anybody ever sanctioned for these for these so-called sonic booms? No, but there there is some interesting um, some interesting stories that I've heard. Now, law enforcement, by and large, as, as soon as it came out, and there was no reports of um, of drills or anything taking place. But as soon as the, the explanation was given for um, sonic booms. Some of the local law enforcement are like, but that's it. We'll stick to that. Um, my experience differs from yours in a number of ways. <laughs> I didn't get arrested, uh, and uh, well, pretty much uh, in every way. I mean, there's not actually been uh, a, a cover up in any way. I mean, that, that I can see in terms of law enforcement. I mean, okay. All right. Well, you, you said that uh, some of them were really anxious to uh, accept the sonic boom explanation, but what about the others? Are there others that, you know, have heard it for themselves and say, that's not a sonic boom? No, um, not, not of law enforcement that I've, that I've seen. Now, there was a police chief in Johnsonville, small town in PD area. He was the one who put forth this um, military aircraft sonic boom story. Um, now, there were, interestingly enough, sightings of military aircraft in the area. But they were, the, the, what's funny is that the, the, the journalist who was reporting, and I don't think the journalist was necessarily out for, um, to cover anything up, but he, he said, yeah, we did see military aircraft in the area. But the thing is, they were, they were, you know, pretty, pretty slow moving, right, because he could identify these aircraft uh, pretty well. So, um, okay. Well, you said that a sheriff put out the story about the sonic booms. What about the Air Force? Did you call them? Air, the Air Force did uh, said that there was no no uh, activity in the area. Okay. So, so then that would be the same as as uh, my experience. Yeah. No activity in the area. Um, we we also heard reports of people in the lower part of Marion County saying that they saw strange lights around the same time. And uh, it was really hard. Nobody could really describe them very well. But they said there was a lot of strange lights, and they couldn't couldn't really tell if it was a natural phenomenon or not. You know, I remember seeing a video uh, a couple of years ago about lights appearing in the sky just before a huge earthquake in China. Do you think that that you know they were 
kind of like an, an aurora type light. It is that uh, sound like something that the people have been describing to you? Well, they were describing uh, flashing lights in a way, not not like a police car flashing light, but 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 almost like some type of lightning. So um, I, I think the the aurora lights they were they appeared in Japan right when that big uh, Fukushima earthquake uh, happened happened in Japan they appeared there I, I've heard that they've appeared other places as well straight uh, shortly before the, the the earthquake so I mean I didn't get a look at it uh, but and nobody could really describe it that's why I didn't put too much about it in the articles nobody could really clearly describe it to me um, but other than saying that there were strange lights in the sky at the time that this was happening Okay. Well, you know, we've had some uh, more explosions up here. Uh, I didn't feel it personally, but two people have come to me because I'm starting to get a reputation around town. And two people have come to me telling me that they felt another explosion in January. One of the people actually said that the foundation of his mother's basement cracked, that the explosion was so powerful. So, I'm, um, you know, he had to repair that. And yeah, that's going to... Uh, be featured along in this story too. Uh, I, is there anything else that, that we need to, to talk about, Brandon? Have, have I forgotten to ask you anything that really needs to get out there? Well, the, the only thing I would say is that if, if you wanted to, uh, to get an idea of how much this is happening, you know, this happened in New Jersey uh, as well. I did a report on that. Um, there were these strange sounds that, that, that happened up there that, that shook people awake. That people were actually running out of their houses because they thought a bomb had go, gone off or, or something like that. Um, th this is happening in more places. And again, I mentioned the Seneca guns, right? This is something that happens in North Carolina. And, and a lot of people in South Carolina have heard it historically. But, you know, New Jersey, it's a coastal area. But Michigan, you know, is, is not. You've got the Great Lakes. But, you know, it's it's not something that can be readily explained. Um, if you go to the articles that I've written, and probably under the articles that you've put up, and the videos that you've put up, you'll see a lot of people who who are commenting, and there's no way to really vent this unless they put the, um, the links to the stories, local news stories, which I would encourage them all to do uh, from now on. But so many people are commenting and saying, yeah, this is happening in Tennessee. This is happening, you know, here in this area, in this area, all over the country. So, I mean, what is this? This is, you know, this is a relatively recent phenomenon to be happening as much as it does. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I would just encourage people to maybe start coordinating and and and, and sending reports of, of what's happening and, and the explanations that they've been given. Um Okay. So that, that's all. all right. Now, I will. Uh, yeah. There is one other thing okay. I, I would mention that there, the first, uh, the first ones, because the ones that I reported on to begin with, uh, the the lights that I mentioned, some of the the witnesses were saying that uh, the lights actually looked like helicopters. No, oh, really. And, uh, and again, I, I, I didn't see any of this, but I had uh, more than one person say that, that it looked like that in one area, um, that there were some aircraft. They were not planes that they could tell, but they, they looked like helicopters. This was way out in, uh, in the country, the lower part of, of Marion County. Um, so I want to correct one other thing. I mentioned that the, uh, the individual, the the journalist, I went back and as we were talking, I clicked on my little article. The journalist in Hemingway who claimed that he saw the jets, he did say that there was, uh, you know, that the afterburners were going. But again, I would ask, how did you identify the aircraft so so, easy, so quick? Because he, he picked them out uh, pretty quick. Uh, this is not a guy who was necessarily in the military, it's just a journalist. How would you have picked them out so quick if they were moving so fast? And, you know, it's just. It's just a lot of uh, funny things uh, in the reports that, that came out of that area when they were trying to explain it. So far, everybody's pretty much just dropped an explanation. It happens now. Um, it's, it's largely ignored. So. Yeah, well, you know, I, I have a feeling that it's going to be increasing in frequency and in intensity to the point where it won't be able to be ignored much longer. Uh, 
Brandon Turberville, my very favorite author at Activist Post. Thank you for being on The Truth is Viral. I appreciate it, bro. Well, thanks, Bob. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so that's what Brandon has to say. So it's not me. It's not my guest. It's not Brandon. It's not the thousands of other people that felt this blast. It's not the hundreds of them that took to Facebook posting about this blast. We are not crazy. Whatever's going on up here is real. It is happening. And it's being kept a secret from the citizens of this area. And a, an explosion that is that large, large enough to, cro to cause structural property damage to a home is a clear and present danger to the people of Alpena County. Having a Black Hawk pilot basically land in somebody's yard is a clear and present danger to the people of Alpena County. And I'm not going to stand for it. What am I going to do? What do I ever do? I run my mouth. <laughs> But I tell secrets. I tell secrets that they don't want you to know. That makes me a dangerous individual. So I sure would appreciate it if you would keep us in your prayers uh, because we need you know, prayers for safety. We really do. Things are, are coming to a head and uh, things are gonna get bad. So please remember to keep us in your prayers. Support the channel. Go to facebook.com slash the truth is viral, uh, Twitter, dot com slash the truth is viral keep up to date with us and we'll get to the bottom of this and even if we don't learn all the answers well boy we need to come together and we need to stand up for our rights because this just is not right thank you for watching the truth is viral my name is bob powell and as always god bless semper fi hoorah Thank you for watching The Truth Is Viral with your host, Bobby Powell. Make sure to follow The Apocalypse on Twitter at The Truth Is Viral. Like The Truth Is Viral on Facebook. And if you can, please remember to donate to the cause via PayPal at www.bobpowell.blogspot.com. Smack Runner. Your game is through. Smack Runner. I'm talking to you.